If you want to turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 12, we'll be in verse 10 today. Yeah, apparently DJ didn't like the scripture I announced. Wow. <clears throat> but again, it's 1 Corinthians 12. We'll be in verse 10. And while you're looking for it, let me pray for us again. Father, again, we thank you that you've gathered us together here today. And we thank you, Lord, that you've already moved in this place here today healing people. We thank you for the testimonies that we've already heard just this morning. Lord, we ask that you continue to be with us and that you continue to speak to us. Lord, this is a verse and this is a passage that applies to the church today, and we need to hear from you today to so come and speak to us. And as always, we invite the Holy Spirit to be with us because we know that as the Holy Spirit is with us, there can be no spirit of distraction in the room. And as the Holy Spirit is with us, there can be no spirit of doubt or confusion in the room. Only the Holy Spirit gets to speak and move and have his way in this place. And Holy Spirit, we do long for you to do just that. Amen. Well, last week I had looked at Ephesians 3.10 that says his intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. And we established in that message that the point that Paul was trying to make here is that the church gathered in unity is making the gospel known to the demonic realms. How did you summarize it earlier today? Come to church. Come to church, beat the devil. That's, that's a good summary of it, yeah. But it occurred to me, as we, as we looked at that passage last week, we established that the church gathered in unity. God has made it so that as we gather, we're actually making the gospel of Jesus known to all of the demonic realms. So it occurred to me that we might do well to know what the demonic realm is up to. God actually gave this, the church a gift of knowing what the demonic realm was up to. Do you know that? God gave the church a gift so that we could know what the demonic realm is up to. But sadly, this gift is forgotten and seldom used. And so today I want to look at this forgotten and seldom used gift because the church as a whole is suffering because of it. Amen? All right, let's look at 1 Corinthians 12, verse 10. To another miraculous powers, to another prophets, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. I want to focus in today on that verse that says, distinguishing between spirits. Have you ever wondered why that's in your Bible? This is part of a list of spiritual gifts that Paul wants the church to understand and to operate in. Now, the church in our day tends to focus on gifts like healing, prophecy, words of knowledge, tongues. Those are the sexy gifts, right? <laughs> but what about this gift of distinguishing between spirits? I think this gift should be just as important as the others. If the gathered church is making the gospel known to the demonic realm as we established last week, then shouldn't we also know what the demonic realm is up to? So let's start by asking some questions of this gift that we see here. Why do we need this gift? Why do we need the gift of distinguishing between spirits? Well, first of all, this gift blows the lid off the devil's workings. Whatever he's up to, this gift will blow the lid off of that and expose it. I want to look at several different scriptures that will help us see why we need this gift, okay? I briefly mentioned this one last week as we were looking at Ephesians, but 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen says, And no wonder, for Satan masquerades as an angel of light. So Satan is pretending to be something good. So we need to be able to discern what is what and which is which. If he's pretending to be something good, I need to know that that's the devil and not actually God, right? 1 John 4, 1. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit. Just let that sink in for a minute. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, 
which you have heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. John doesn't talk about it in terms of a gift here, but he does tell us to discern the spirits. He says, don't believe every spirit, which means there are many spirits, right? Mm -hmm. Whoa, that should be sobering. First, John talks about recognizing that not every spirit is from God. So this is part of this idea of discerning spirits. And then second, he goes on to say not every prophet is from God. You mean some of those prophets out there aren't actually speaking for God? Well, how would I know the difference? This command of John here speaks of the need to discern spirits. And now notice, it just as a side note, it also says that the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world. So the Antichrist is a spirit that has been in the world since the time of the apostles. Hold on to your hats which means we can stop trying to figure out which politician is the Antichrist. <laughs> it's not Obama. Because he wasn't around when the apostles were, right? And this spirit of Antichrist has been there since then. But we do need to be able to discern what the spirit is doing and what spirit it is. We need this gift, right? 1 Timothy 4.1 says this, the clearly... The Spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. When is he talking about? He's talking about today. Which means there are demons out there teaching things. Whoa. That just got serious in a hurry. There are demons out there teaching things, and we need to be able to discern what's what. When Jesus told us the parable of the wheat and the weeds in Matthew 13, he tells us that the enemy sows the seeds at night while everyone was sleeping to emphasize the hidden nature of what the enemy does. So again, we need to be able to distinguish what the enemy is doing and what's God. We can see that the enemy likes to work in secret and in hidden ways, these few scriptures that I've showed you so far make it clear why we need this gift of discerning spirits. Having said that, I also think that this is the most neglected and most misunderstood gift of all of them. The church is paying the price for not having this gift in operation. But when you think about it, that makes sense. The enemy doesn't want to be discovered, so he'll push against this gift more than any other. Here's the thing, I, you know, every year I teach a class on spiritual gifts. And so I've studied that and read a lot of books on that, did a lot of assessments. Most spiritual gift assessments don't even include discerning spirits. But they do include the gift of hospitality, which is never mentioned in scripture. I found tons of spiritual gift assessments that include hospitality, which is never directly mentioned as a gift in Scripture. But this one, discerning spirits, which is mentioned in Scripture, is not included in most gift assessments. The people who operate in this gift can blow the lid off what the enemy is doing. So this gift is often misunderstood and attacked. There was a woman in our church many years ago who had this gift. And she thought she was crazy, and many people told her, you're crazy. She was constantly told, you just need to go get therapy. You're crazy. And she started sharing with me what she was seeing. I said, no, you have the gift of discerning spirits. And I began to help her understand what the gift was and how to operate in it and that she wasn't crazy. And there were several times, and I'll share a story in a minute, she really bailed this church out by being able to discern spirits. But up until she understood it was a gift, she thought she was crazy. Why am I seeing these things? So Tim, why are you talking about this gift? Well, because this church, Chris Lake Vineyard, has at least one, probably more, people who have this gift, and we need that gift in operation. Now, let's pick apart this scripture a little bit to see if we can understand it. To another distinguishing between spirits. The word distinguishing here is translated from the Greek word diachrisis, which means to discern, distinguish, or pass judgment. The root of that word comes from the Greek verb karino, which means to judge. 
So the idea or concept here of judging is very much tied into this word, which is where most of our English translations come from. Now, the word translated as spirit in the Greek is the Greek word pneuma, which simply means spirit. And it's where we get English words like pneumatic or pneumonia. What's important to note here is that that word pneuma in Greek is in plural, which means there's more than one spirit being judged or assessed here. And all of those other scriptures that we just looked at confirm that there are many spirits and many demons out there, right? So as Paul tells us about this gift, he says, you will be able to discern among many spirits. But it's also important to note here that what is being discerned are spirits. This is not simply the natural ability to discern or have intuition in the natural realm. This is discerning of spirit beings. This is the supernatural spiritual gift of discerning natural and supernatural spirits. Amen? This is not just, oh, I'm very intuitive. This is a gift that God gave to the church so that we can recognize what spirit beings are doing. Many commentators, as you read about this gift, they want to dumb it down and make it simply about the ability to discern and lessen the idea of seeing into the spirit realm. But people who have this gift often see things in the spiritual realm. On the negative side, they can see things that look like spiders, rats, shadows, or even outright demons. On the positive side, they can see angels. Many years ago, we had a woman who visited our church. She was a first-time visitor. This is the best part. She was not a believer. She was not a believer. At the time, we had a counseling service that was renting our office space from us, and she had been coming here to receive counseling from that service, and she came to church one Sunday, but she was not a believer. After the service, she told Amy, she goes, I thought it was really cool you had that nine-foot guard with a spear out in front of the door. Well, of course, we didn't actually have a nine-foot guard with a spear out there. She saw an angel. And then she tells Amy, she goes, I really couldn't pay attention to that guy up front talking because there were two armies on horses clashing up on the ceiling. She could see oh, an army, two armies fighting on the ceiling with horses and swords. She was seeing into the spirit realm and she was seeing spirit beings fighting on our behalf in the service. Yeah. So even a non-believer can operate in this gift. I, in my spiritual gift class, I always say we're all, we always have these gifts. We're born with them. We don't begin to understand them until somebody mentors us and teaches us how to, work in this, how to walk in this gift. As part of discerning, there is, something, there is something in this gift that also gives us the ability to tell when someone is lying. So if you're operating in this gift of distinguishing spirits, you can tell when someone is lying. Acts 5.3 says, And then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? There was nothing in the story that made it obvious to Peter that they were lying, right? So Peter was perhaps operating in this gift of discerning spirits which is why he says, why has Satan so filled your heart? He could see what was happening. Peter discerned the spirit. And I've had this happen to me too. Someone's been telling me something, they're going on and on and on, and the spirit just said to me, they're lying. And so I just called them out. I said, you're lying. And they're like, yeah. Well, why don't you try again? Don't lie this time. This gift often works very closely with other gifts, especially prophecy or words of knowledge and even healing. In fact, <clears throat> there can be a fine line between this gift and words of knowledge. And often after there is a discerning of a spirit, there, there can then be words of knowledge about the spirit or what the spirit is up to. And I'll share stories in a minute. This gift can be used to judge and discern prophecy or words of knowledge as well, whether it's from God or not, which we see in 1 Corinthians 14 and 1 Thessalonians 5. This gift can enable other gifts. This gift can tell us the nature of a prophetic vision, and this gift can often tell us the source of chronic illness. Many years ago, Amy and I ministered to a woman who had been chronically ill for 35 years. And talking to her for about five minutes, the Lord showed me that it was a spirit. I called out the name of the spirit. We got rid of it, and she was cured of 35 years of chronic illness. 
But it started with discerning that there was a spirit behind it. Now, let's look at what this gift might look like from Scripture. I think our best example is Acts 16, starting in verse 16. Once when they were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. When the owners of the slave girl realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. But now here's the thing. On the surface, it appeared that this girl was legit. She is saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. That agrees with what we just read in 1 John 4. Right? 1 John 4 says, every spirit that says Jesus Christ came is the Spirit of God, right? This sure sounds like she's speaking from God. But yet Paul was able to discern and distinguish spirits, and he could tell this was not from God, and it says that he turned and he spoke to the Spirit in the girl, and it came out. So even though she is saying something that sounds godly, it was in fact a demonic spirit. This is why we need this gift, Right? Because there can be stuff happening in the church that seems godly, but it's not. Here's another example. Acts 13. But Elimaeus, the sorcerer, for that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elimaeus and said, You are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind, and for a time you will be unable to see the light of the sun. Immediately mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about looking for someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. This one is maybe less definitive than the last one, but again, Paul seems to be able to see more than what was obvious in the physical realm. Saying something like, you are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right, seems to go beyond what he would have known in the natural realm. So apparently he's seeing something in, in discerning spirits there, right? Here's another example, Acts 8. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money. And he said, Give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Peter answered, May your money perish with you, because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry, because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness, and pray to the Lord, perhaps he will forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Then Simon answered, pray to the Lord for me so that nothing you have said may happen to me. Verse 23 says, I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. There's nothing in the story, again, that would make that apparent in the physical realm. And I love the way it says, Paul says, I can see it. It's a spirit. Something that I'm able to discern and see. This gift is so that we can not only see what the evil spirits are doing, what the demons are up to, but it's also going to be used on the positive side so that we can see what God is doing. Here's a positive one in Acts 14. In Lystera, there sat a man crippled in his feet who was lame from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, Stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. 
Paul could see that God was at work in his life and that he had faith to be healed. It says, I see, I saw that you have faith to be healed. He's discerning the difference between what the Holy Spirit is doing and what a demonic spirit might have been doing. I have had many people over the years ask me to pray for their healing, but I could discern that it wasn't going to happen. And I've learned over the years, just don't waste your time in that because it's, it's just not going to happen. There are other issues that need to be addressed first. Usually I can see that there's a demonic spirit or there's other patterns that have to be addressed first. But the Lord is helping us to see what's happening in the spirit realm. So now I know what you're thinking. Well, what does this gift look like in our day? Well, I, a minute ago I mentioned that there was a woman that used to attend our church that had this gift, and she thought she was crazy at first. Well, there was one day during worship, Amy and the team were up for leading worship, and normally when worship is going right, like last Sunday when Duke was here, good Lord, worship was just glorious, wasn't it? Normally when worship is going right, you can just feel the lifting. You can just feel worship lifting, right? This particular morning, Amy's up here, and they're, they're leading worship, and it's not lifting. And I'm in the back where I normally am, and I'm pacing around back down. I'm like, Lord, what's wrong? What's wrong? And it's not lifting. Well, this girl comes over to me, and she says, Pastor Tim, there's a demon in the corner by the water cooler. All right. She could see it plain as day. I could not, but I trusted her gift. And so I went, worship was, I went, stood in the corner, and I commanded the demon to leave. And I know that there was a demon, and I know that the demon left, because as soon as I commanded it to leave, worship just lifted. Like, worship just instantly went to another level, as soon as that demon in the corner was gone. Yeah. Right? That's why we need this gift in the church. We had, Amy and I had an instance in, uh, we were in South Africa, I think, and a woman came up to me and told me that she had epilepsy and that she just needed to learn to live with it. Amy could tell it was a spirit and she called it out. The woman, as soon as Amy called it out, the woman dropped to the floor and slithered like a snake underneath the whole row of chairs all the way to the end. Just like a snake, all the way down the row of chairs, under the chairs, between the legs. And her husband was standing, I looked at her husband and I said, you know that's not epilepsy, right? That's not what a seizure looks like. That's a demon. Do you see that? Come on, church. So I went and got the local pastor and said, that's a demon. And I'm not taking care of it. You are. This is your church. She's your person. You take care of it. There was a story here in our own church one night. We were all gathered in the back back there. And I was going around praying for people. As I prayed for this one person, it, it, sometimes this gift of me will operate where it just happens. I don't even have time to think about it. And I laid my hands on the person, and what came out of my mouth is, there's a spirit of molestation on you. The person immediately manifested, and we got rid of the spirit. That person was completely different and transformed after that because it turns out they weren't sleeping at night. There was a spirit that would come and torment them every night and basically molest them every night. So they weren't sleeping. But, we got, but I could, in that moment, it just came out, and we got rid of that spirit. So let's get real practical for a minute, is how we walk out this gift. Because there's going to be one or more of you in this church that have this. If I see a spirit, or I discern something that I think is not of God, or is of God, what do I do? This gift, just like all the other gifts, never comes for our entertainment. That's what drives me crazy about modern churches. They tend to use gifts for entertainment purposes, right? That's, power always comes with kingdom purpose, yeah. period. Yeah. If you see something or discern something happening, you know, that the Holy Spirit is alerting you to, here are some simple steps for what to do. If you see or discern something in the context of a church service, tell the pastor or the elder. If you see something in the context of praying for someone in a group, tell the group leader. If you see or discern something in the context of praying for someone yourself, begin to pray based on what you saw. But be very pastoral here. Say something like, the Lord is not showing this to me to embarrass you or to shame you. The Lord is showing this to me for healing. He wants to bring healing and he wants to set you free. Okay? Okay. Because if you share it wrong, the enemy will come in in a minute and just turn that thing into shame and embarrassment. Yeah. If you're praying for healing and you discern something that there might be a spirit behind the illness or the injury, stop and pray for that first. 
then return to praying for the healing and you'll probably find the healing has already taken place. Once you get the spirit gone, the healing is like that. And there, there are spirits behind healings way more often than we want to admit. I used to say, I don't want to see a demon behind every bush, but a friend of mine, a fellow pastor, goes, no, Tim, there really is a demon behind every bush. <laughs> and I'm beginning to think he's true. But if you see something in public, in a public place, use that for intercession. The woman in our church that had that gift, if she would walk through her neighborhood, she could actually see spirits on certain corners. They would be on the power lines, and they would be on certain corners in her neighborhood. But I warned her, don't take on those spirits by yourself. Just begin to intercede. Because there can be territorial spirits. Daniel 10, I think that one's in there. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and I have come in response to them. So Daniel had been praying and immediately, the minute he began to pray, this spirit being says, I came in response to your prayers immediately, but the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, that is the archangel Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. So the minute Daniel starts to pray, a spirit being is dispatched to answer his prayer. But at first it says the prince of Persia and then later it says the king of Persia. So this was a big, big territorial spirit that ruled over all of Persia through the king. Oh boy, government leaders can be ruled by a spirit. That's a whole other message. but So here is a territorial spirit ruling over an entire nation, and it detained the answer to Daniel's prayers. Those kinds of territorial spirits still exist in our day. They didn't go away in Daniel's era, but don't take those on by yourself. If you want to read more about that, John Paul Jackson wrote a book called Needless Casualties of War. But you, you can bring together people and you can begin to intercede for those territorial spirits. But again, we need people with the gift of discerning spirits to see those spirits because that spirit could be the answer to our troubles. Amen? Amen. One of the best things that you can do when you discern or see something is ask the Lord, what do you want me to do with this? You've allowed me to see this and discern this, now what do you want me to do? But again, if in the context of a church setting, tell the pastor or an elder. Here's why. Demonic spirits always respond to authority. Period. Plain and simple. Demonic spirits have a very blind, just narrow channel of responding to authority. Think military lines of command, right? If you're in the military and someone with a higher rank than you says jump, you ask how high. No questions asked. How high, right? It's the same in the demonic realm. This demonic spirits will always respond to the person with the most authority. So if you discern something, tell the person with the most authority. In church, the pastor, the elder, and the group, the group leader. Everything revolves around this idea of authority. Here's a great example of that from Acts 19. One day, the evil spirit answered him. Wait, evil spirits can talk to us? Well, we're just uncovering all kinds of good news today, aren't we? Jesus, I know, and I know about Paul, but who are you? Then the man who had the, had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. This man didn't have any authority. And the Spirit's like, I know all about Jesus and I know all about Paul because I know their authority. I don't know who you are. I'm beating your butt. <laughs> this is why we always operate within authority. And I've seen this happen. I was in Senegal once, and there was a small, petite Senegalese woman, probably someone about the size of Beverly. She was beating up five grown men, just throwing them around the room like rag dolls, just tossing them everywhere. And they called for me and the other pastor that was with me. And we just walked in like, just let her go. You're not going to overcome her physically. Just let her go. And then the Lord gave me a word of knowledge that she was wearing amulets. And she was. We had the amulets removed. And then the spirit left. When you pray based on discernment, you will often get an immediate confirmation. 
When I prayed out the demon in the corner by the water cooler, the atmosphere in the church, church changed immediately. When I called out the spirit of molestation in that woman, she immediately began to manifest and let me know that the spirit was there. Now here's the thing. People who operate in this gift tend to face a lot more spiritual warfare. Again, this is probably because the enemy doesn't want to be discovered, so he fights back. So there is something very, there is something very tormenting about seeing demons and evil spirits, but then as you call that out and you bring it to the attention of authority and you defeat the enemy, the enemy will push back hard with lots of spiritual warfare. It takes a fair amount of courage to speak up and say what you're seeing as well. So I pray that whoever has this gift would also receive a gift of courage. And I will crash land there and call the worship team back up. How's that? <laughs>